Hello? What's happening now then? Is it finished? Bloody thing. You know what I mean? Rubbish, you know, at this game, and you know, I useless. Right? You know what I mean? I'll, I'll try and give myself an intro. It's the computer's playing up again. Okay? It keeps um, not crashing, but it's not letting me click on things. Right? It's all... Um, it's all rubbish, you know what I mean? It's uh, overloading again, you know what I mean? I've got to close some of these windows down, and I? That's the only way that I can sort of um, get, get through with it all. Uh, let's have a look now, right? Let's Hang on, let's go over here, right? Let's see where we are here, okay, right? Uh, let's see that, yeah, let's do that, right? Let's that. Right, now let's open that one. Yeah, let's close that. We don't need that. We don't need that. I'll leave the Twitter on, shall I? Yeah, I'll, I'll leave the Twitter on. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, we got the cameras there on. Yeah, okay. What else we got? Uh, evening, everyone, right? Yeah, sorry about that. You know what I'm like with the countdowns and all that? It's a drizzly, horrible, rainy day. It's been pouring out here all day. And as you know, that my house is like a Swiss cheese. I've got buckets there and all that catching the water. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's a few things been happening today as usual. Okay, Paris is on fire. Right, they're rioting in Paris, right? Whether it's by design anyway, and that's what they want to act, I don't know. But you see, um, what they do... What they try to do, you see, is they... Uh, Try to provoke reactions and Macron, right? You know what I mean? He's doubled down. He's doubled down to all of it, you see. And what he's going to do now, right, is he's, you know, he'll send in the gendarmes, and it, you know what I mean? Them, them people. And they're, you know, it seems to me a lot of this is by design, though. A lot of this is, you know, it's not random, is it? You know, problem, reaction, solution. We see it in the UK. We see with um, what's been happening with... Uh, we see what's been happening with the people, you know what I mean, that, that have been involved in all this game. You know, that's been going on. Sorry, I'm doing two things, you know what? I'm like trying to fill the dead... Oh, I need that music thing, don't I? That's it. I'll put the music thing on that's um, in the background. Where is it? Is it brained? Is that it? Yeah, right. What's it? Background music. Right, here we are. Daydreaming. Let's stick that on, see what that sounds like. Right. I can't wait, right, until I can actually have a computer that's working. So let's go here, right? Let's see that what's going on here. Nothing's going on there, right? Okay, that's that sorted. Right, now we're here. Yeah, that's it. Call it porn music, whatever you want. I'm not interested. I'm a bit ratty today as well. So I'm not in a good mood. <laughs> well, whenever I am, I, I'm always tired. That's what it is, you see. And on Facebook, right, I keep getting, I don't know what it is, right? I think it might be... Um, this Bitcoin thing, or what it is, I keep getting all these people from all around the world wanting to friend me on Facebook, and then they keep saying hello and all that. So what I've been doing is I've been using it as a way to channel any anger, so I'll just write back to them with a load of abuse. I think that the worst abuse that I could ever give any person, and I'll just write it back, and I'll tell you what, it makes me feel a lot better. So on Facebook, right, be careful if you, um, right, want to friend me, okay, um, and I'll friend you, yeah, right, but listen, if you write something like, um, oh, hello, or something like that, where, where it's a Bitcoin or something like that, right, 
please expect right to be abused severely. What I do is I look at the person, see where they come from, see what group they're in, and then I think of the most despicable, nasty attacks I can, and then I write back to them. It makes me feel better, actually. I enjoy doing it. Do you know what I mean? You know, yeah, I do. So whatever these people are, right, but then now I've stopped accepting friends on now. I've stopped accepting, um, you know, if, if if you're an up-together person, proper person, I will. But if your name's Umtuggy Wugga Bong Bongo, right, well, I'm not going to be interested, right? If your name is Milosevic, Chichovic, Chichic, I'm not interested, okay? But you know what I mean? If your name is Bloomberg, Steen, right, Weinberg, I'm not interested. If, if there's any fake names on there, do you know what, right? I've got over a thousand people follow me on Facebook, right? And there's another thousand that I've just um, marked as read and ain't even bothered because they're now annoying me. They keep sending me messages. So I want to know, how can you empty your friends thing on Facebook, right? In a different way than just doing it one at a time because that is so laborious. Can you highlight, like, I don't know, 400 people you don't want as friends and then delete them? Or do you have to do it one at a time? Yeah, sorry, do you want me to turn the music down? Do I? Yeah, okay, right. There you go, how about that? See that what that is. Yeah, I know we do all these things, don't we? I mean, I'll get the ump. And so the best way, right, the best way um, to do it, right, is so to get that anger out. So if someone from wherever it is writes to me, hello, right, I just write back, you dirty, filthy scumbag. And then I had the most vicious, nasty, right, abuse that I can. It just makes me feel better anyway. But yeah, I mean, so what I think I might have to do, I might have to um, close that Facebook, well, no, leave it there dormant and open up another Facebook account or something, right? You know what I mean? But there are people who do contact me on there who are legit. But I don't know, how, how, yeah, how do I um, how do I sanitise my friends list then? Because the only way I know how to do it is go to the list of friends, click on the dots and then you delete them. Or unfollow them. Well, I ain't going to do that five 500 times. Is there any way that I can highlight multiple people and unfollow them? That's what I'd like to do. Because then that would be easy then. Because you can normally tell, can't you? Right? And what it is, I don't know what they're doing. Do they work on commission or something? Bitcoin? Or they said, have you been contacted by so-and-so? I said, what's that then? They went, um, oh, we, sir, you've been awarded. I'm like, fuck off. You know what I mean? Just start. You know what I mean? But mind you, I've been using it as a, um, as a way to exercise my anger. So what I do is I look at the person, see what group I think they're from, and then I'll, I'll think of the most vicious, nasty attacks and then throw it at them, right? Because it means, cause you can't do it on here. You can't do it on um, you know Twitter and all that. Because to be honest with you, you're only ever seeing 10% of what I'd really like to say. Because, you know, you've seen me go at people, haven't you? I mean, I can be the most, you know what I mean? I can cut people off at the knees, so to speak, right? Be the most vicious, nasty and all that. And sometimes I enjoy doing it when people attack me or if it's someone I don't like. You see, and that's what all the negativity is in this world. And I think I've come to the conclusion, right, that you're never going to be able to clean it out. Over the centuries, right, societies and that have tried to cleanse, right, the evil, nasty negativeness on many occasions and never been out to, to do it. Each time the evil comes back stronger. And again, we can see it now that the evil now is it, um, are the people with evil intent and bad intent are in all the top positions around the world. Well, that ain't going to end good, is it? Plus, today I was reading up about her, one of the most evil women in history, right? Madeleine Albright, a nasty, vicious, filthy piece of scum. Madeleine Albright. 
when she was asked about 500,000 children dying in Iraq due to the sanctions, she said, and I'll quote, it's a price worth paying. That's Madeleine Albright, a dirty, filthy, scum, low life. Right, you know what I mean? Non-religious, non-religious, don't worry about what she said she found out later on. Non-religious, she's a, right, and, but, you know, remember that saying, they always say, anyone says it to you, I'm a Christian, but I'm not religious, I'm a Muslim, I'm not religious, or I'm a Jew, and I'm not religious, right, you know they're evil, and they're trying to use that as a weapon when they bad behaviour gets discovered, and Madeleine Albright was another one of them, pagans. Oh, um, now people are saying they want it up louder now, see? I can't... Yeah, look, there it is. No, 36, that's a bit much, isn't it? Let's go down to 29, that'll do. Yeah, it's all right. I'm just getting a few things off my chest today, right? Because I, I, I really do, I feel like I'm being restricted in what I can say. You know, with things and all that, the way things are going, obviously. And, you know, when I'm not going to go off the reservation, you know, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. But it, it means that I feel like I've been restricted. So, you know, you have to bear with me. Paris is burning. Right, there's a scumbag in Scotland called Damien McCann. Right, um, his wife filmed him, right, graping at a young girl. He's doing 12 years and he's been disfigured by an inmate at Salt and Prison. And the inmate got another two years. And then, uh, right, on this, around Liverpool, right, they've got a couple in Asda, right, snorting cocaine while they're doing their shopping. And I wrote, I wrote, scum is scum is scum. Sterilization, sterilization, sterilization for low IQ filth. Because they are, look, she's got um, leggings on, right, air up, right, a, a, a parker, he's got, look, he's snorting as well. Honestly, they're not, they're of no use to society. And years ago, it was all right because we could get them in the army and, and they could be cannon fodder. Okay, we could they could get mowed down, World War One and all that. I mean, I know it was terrible, but in some respects, it did get rid of a lot of scum, didn't it? But the thing is, you can't have any wars, conventional ones now, so you need to do something else. Well, I think they should all be sterilised. And I know that that's a subject people don't like to talk about because they go, all oh, this, all that. Well, I'm coming to the conclusion, right, that society is a sewer. And maybe, maybe, you know, where you have to clean things through and all that, maybe, a, you know, maybe a nuclear war might help, right? Because I know millions will die, but also millions of scum will go, wouldn't they? And then what we could do after the nuclear war, we can then say we know who started this, we know who was behind this, and never again. And may, you know, and, and finally, once and for all, right, you know what I mean, extinguish, right, the cut out the cancer of humanity, which has been there for over a thousand years. But I don't think it's going to happen. I just think we're just going to wallow around in the sewer of perversion. And every now and again, there'll be a little pushback. But to be honest with you, I think the, um, the agenda and the map is set. You know, um, but yeah, I know there's strong opinions and, you know, and you don't have to agree with me. Now, this one, right, is a dirt, you know, the dirty, filthy, perverted, right, Irish government headed by that, you know, I mean, scumbag, Leo Varadka. And, right, at TD, Verona Murphy, right, she gave a damning excoration of the Irish government's housing policy in the Dáil this afternoon. She said, and I'll quote, if I have one homeless child in Wexford, one child that isn't accommodated, I'll be bringing that child here and I'll be sitting it in the Kean Commerce lap. Now, I don't know what that bleeding means. None of that Irish thing, isn't it? C E A W N C O M H A R. Right. So it, to me, it looks like C N Com Harely. 
So, right, she, uh, what is the CN Com hair elite? Is that some position in the Irish doll? Because um, she said she's going to be getting the child who's been made homeless and, and, and sit it in the CN Com hair elite. Fuck's sake, what's that then? Is that some kind of minister? Executing warrants in Rochdale today, they are. It's a, it's a losing battle with this. It really is a losing battle. But you mustn't get despondent. You've got to keep going. Oh, when the family, right, of Ross Browning, right, where they're still living in the mansion, right, you know what I mean? The one and a half million pound um, estate, right, that the uh, Ross Browning's got. Okay, they're still living there, saying that we're going to look after it in case it does get seized. And the UVF, right, are preparing for a future without the leader, right? My question is, why are the UVF, the UVF still in existence? They shouldn't even be in existence. And we all know them, Irving and all that. We know the names. So I can't, you know, you, do you want me to give you the names? I know. We all know the names. One of them's not well. He's getting old. But the UVF are nothing now more than drug dealing criminals. That's all they are. Loyalist terror group, UVF, preparing for a future without a leader. Would-be leaders, harmless stockmen and Winky Irving are deeply disliked and mistrusted within the ranks. Right, the current terror chief of the, uh, uh, the terrorist UVF is John Bunter Graham. And they're saying he's going to be the last chief of staff. And then the UVF commander, drug dealer, and UVF commander drug dealer, harmless Harry Stockman and Winky, Winston Winky Irving, right? Do you know what I mean? That, that, you know, they're trying to do it. Harry Stockman's not like, but they're just drug dealers. They're criminals and nothing to do with anything ideology. And you know them scumbags, the, the Tobin brothers, well, they've been ordered to pay back £20,000 out of alleged £20 million worth of profits. So that's no deterrent, is it? And they continue grafting behind bars. And then another scumbag, right, he, um, in Manchester, Kieran Oldham, 37. He's been found guilty of murder of a kind, you know, one of a kind, nice dad. Cocaine fueled, right? Well, let's hope he gets 50 recommendation. Life with 50 years. Let's start having some 50 years. Means it's the end of your life. It's over, as you know it. You're never coming out. And this is chilling, this one. Honestly, right? Right, the, um, because of that Nicola Bully thing, see, you know, I'll tell you things don't happen for no reason. Now, the police guidelines, right, is going to be, right, they're not going to even release the names of people when they've been charged. So when they arrest people, they won't say nothing, then they're going to charge them and they won't even release the names then. So when they go to court, they may keep even the names out and you know why that is so that they can keep about the names of all the police officers they get that get charged. See what they're doing? Chilling police plans to keep charged suspects' names secret. Forces across England and Wales are to be given the option of not releasing the identity of those charged with criminal offences. And the reason is, is because we're going to see so many more police officers, white-collar crim uh, people and all that carry on, charged with crimes. So now they don't even want to publish the names. Well, what's what's next then? Not publish the names in court? Sinister that, innit, eh? That is sinister, innit, eh? That really is sinister, innit, eh? You can't believe that, could you? You see, and now it's starting to make sense. Why did they act like they did on the Nicola Bully case? Well, that was a problem, reaction, solution. Problem created by releasing details of Nicola Bully reaction the public are fuming with it so the solution is not to release any names and you go well why would you want to do that well the truth is right is because of all the uh, the police officers going to be charged 
So now they won't even name the police officers when they're or name people when they're charged. You see? So you see, that's what's going to happen now, then, isn't it? You know what I mean? They're going to, um, they're not even going to name, you know, the, well, that's all right. That's where people like me become more important then, doesn't it? You see, so when people get arrested, we get told who it is. When they get charged, if they won't release the names, well, I will. Okay, I'll have to release the names, won't I? And then what will be the next thing in the court list, then? Won't they have the names listed? So there's going to be more of an opportunity, right? There's, well, there's going to be more need for citizen journalists like me. Yeah, I know. Funny title, isn't it? A citizen journalist, right? You know what I mean? It's funny because people in the media have been calling me that. They've been saying, yeah, Art Hostage, you are a citizen journalist. So the Nicola Bully thing, right? Do you know what I mean? It might have had a reason why they did that. Release information, right? Because everyone was going, why would they do that? Well, they've got a bad reaction from the public. Now they're saying, well, we better not release any names even when we charge them. You think, why do you want to do that? Well, it's because there's going to be loads of police officers and loads of people in white-collar jobs are going to be charged going forward and they don't want the embarrassment, so they're going to hide the names. And the Nicola Bully thing, right, we're going on weeks now and nothing's happened. Do you know what I mean? What's happened then? No one been arrested. No one said a word. What's going on? It's funny, isn't it? Strange, isn't it? What, what, what's it all about? All that looking and all that. Couldn't find. Weeks later, find the body. Right, no, right then, nothing. Turn it off like a switch. Not it was on the news wall to wall the other week. Now, they're not even... Because the media get told, stop talking about that. Okay, what is the script with uh, regarding the Nicola Bully thing? I mean, I've left it long enough now. What, you know, what's going on? Problem, reaction, solution. Well, that's one thing that they're using it for anyway. You know, so it makes me very suspicious. Well, of course I am. And as I say, I'm just sort of winging it at the moment. I've been looking, um, I've been looking for what's going on. There you go. Right, the tide is finally ch turning. Right, um, Irish Daily Mirror says dangerous, dangerous. Transformer prisoner Barbie Kardashian will never be allowed to mix with female inmates. Finally. And there was a story right from history about the Merseyside witches that were hanged and drowned. They were subject to barbaric trials. Well, I can tell you a few Merseyside witches now. Come on, we're all going to agree on this one. It's easy, isn't it? You've got Jeanette Mercer, the mother of Sean Mercer, and Joseph Mercer. You've got Christine Fitzgibbons, right? You've got Christine McPartland, Nettie Brennan. You've got Lilo Lil. They're all witches, ain't they? I think so, anyway. Oh, and Vaughan Lane, right? You know what I mean? Right, he was caught with a firearm and ammunition. And he got, he, he got a low sentence, so I don't know, he might have been singing. Marcus Sweeney's got a hand over some land. Right, Terry Pearson wanted by the Merseyside. Police has been arrested. But you see, you know, all these things we really are, you know what I mean? And there's nothing you can do about it. You know, me personally, I know, I'm, I mean, I'm a little bit immune from it, thankfully. I'm a little bit immune, I'm, you know, I'm immune from it in many ways because 
I'm in a little sleepy 1950s village on the south coast of England, so I don't have to live around all this scum and this filth and all these low IQ people and all these anti-social people. Okay, I won't even go to the supermarket because I can't bear being in the same vicinity. You've only got to look at them and you know that they're low IQ. Okay, right, that they, they are a burden on society, a lot of those people. Okay, and, and even people who come from rich families, right, middle class families, right, yeah, they had kids who were, right, who were thick as two short planks. And yes, they should be involved in it as well. There's too many idiots in this world. Now, surely with technology, we can, we can raise the IQ level. Is there nothing we can do about that? We need to discard the low IQ people. I know that won't go down too well, but honestly, that's my elitist coming out. And yes, I am, um, you know, I am um, away from a lot of it here because I am, you know, living in a 1950s sleepy village and I don't go out. The reason I don't go out is because I know I'd, I'd upset someone because I can't stay in the nonsense that I see, you know, and I'll get in trouble. So that's why I just, you know, stay at home all the time. I go on the internet, right? Well, and I can't even really let rip on now because I'll get myself in terrible trouble. You know, but this thing, you know, that, that we, you know, that uh, we just got to see. But to be honest with you, yes, yeah, society really is falling as we recognise it. You know what I mean? Back in the 70s or the 80s, they were talking about immigration and all that game, right? And everyone was saying, oh, that's terrible. You can't say it. You know, and all that. And now it was going to be taken over by this, that and the other, right? Well, you know, we've seen it now 30 years later. Right? They're no-go areas. You go into city centres, you go into towns up and down the England, Wales, Scotland, Ireland. Okay, you go there, right? They're no-go areas. You see, you, whereas years ago, you get a group of young kids, young lads, right? You know what I mean? Causing a bit of antisocial stuff. You're now getting that multiplied. And then people are getting into tribal, into their groups. The Sudanese, the uh, Ethiopians, the Eritreans, the Albanians, the Polish. Let's, you know, let's include everyone, but we know who we're talking about. The French, the Germans, the um, Belgians, you know, all the illegal immigrants from Belgium and German, Germany and all the French um, um, immigrants, you know. We, you, you have to say that, but we know what we're talking about, don't we? I mean, look, look, there is a simple way to do it, right? Why don't the British government say, right, we've got such a problem with immigration, okay, um, for the next two years, we're not letting anyone in the UK, I don't care if they're your relatives, I don't care if they're brain surgeons, rocket scientists or whoever, immigration is suspended into the UK. We're not having any visitors or anyone. We don't want anyone coming in, not even on holiday. Right, honestly, because we're fed up and we're sick and tired of it and we've got to sort out the ones that we got here. And number one, if you enter the UK with no official papers, right, that immediately means that you will never be allowed to settle here. Right, so it don't matter whether you're fleeing war, whatever you're doing, right, it don't matter whether you're men, women or children, elderly or whatever, you've got no, no papers when you come in the country, right, well, you're not going to be allowed to stay here. Goodbye. I've been reading a bit about him as well, Farrakhan, right? Honestly, he's got some strong opinions, but to be honest with you, I'm starting to, you know, I want to know what he means and why he means it. That's Louis Farrakhan, right? Honestly, a lot of people listen to him, right? He's into all that nation of Islam and all that bollocks, right? But I'd like to listen to what he's got to say. I'd like, you know, I'd like, I might go and start listening to what he says. Eugenics, yeah, that's it, eugenics. Yeah, I'm fed up with I'm fed up with being surrounded by idiots. I'm sick of it. Sick of being fed um surrounded by idiots, right? Honestly. And you go back, right? Do you know what I mean? 
Yes, right, yeah, Reese Mogg, he would certainly be, and George Osborne, he'd be in the coal as well, he certainly would. But then, do you think it's all right then being surrounded by all these idiots, all these antisocial people? Do you really think that that's okay then? Are you prepared to have that then? You know, when you go out of your house, you see and now another thing, the 15 minute cities, the 10, 15 minute cities, I'm now starting to walk the idea, okay, where you're not allowed to go more than 15 minutes from your house. Well, that'd keep a lot of the scum, right, on their mistakes, wouldn't it? That'd keep a lot of the people out of um, people out of mischief. So now I'm starting to think, well, the government might have an, might have something about this, keeping everyone at home, you know what I mean? And only letting out nice people, not horrible people. And that don't mean, you know, because we know who the horrible people are, they're horrible. And it don't matter from what class, creed, colour, religion they come from, they're just horrible. So yeah, it'd be nice to keep all them indoors, only, only allow out nice people. Listen, I don't know nothing about Farrakhan, right? Do you know what I mean? I, I just wanted to see what he's got to say. And I might find one or two things in there that I might agree with. Probably won't agree with much of what he says. But I'll have a look, you know what I mean? About mixing groups together and all that game. Let's have a look what he says, you know? So if he says he don't think it's a good idea, well, maybe it ain't a good idea. I certainly don't believe that mass immigration or mass movement of people on the planet, right, has been a good thing. I certainly don't believe that. Not for one moment. It's been one of the biggest disasters, right, ever. Socially, right, it's upturned the table. The social experiment's gone out the window. All morals, all ethics and everything's all gone out the window. You know, maybe we had, a, we had a world lockdown. Well, let's have another lockdown, right? Everyone back to your corner. Whatever passport you got, go back to your country. You're not allowed to move for two years. And then we got to sort out about the freedom, free movement of people. Do you know what I mean? Honestly, all this window dressings, right, is not doing anything, is it? It's just getting progressively worse. So anyway, that's my little rant there for 35 minutes. I feel better now, do you know what I mean? Honestly, that was literally nothing compared with what I've been re responding to people on Facebook who are not sort of like, you know, they're saying about Bitcoin and all that. Oh my God, I look who it is and go, right, what, what's the most nastiest thing I can say? And then I write it down and send it to them. I don't care. Sue me. But we all get moments where we get frustrated, we get angry with things, we get angry with the world, we get angry with the way things are going. And it's the way that you express them. I mean, to be honest, I'll just sort of like um, have a little moan, you know, like the fella in the, in the box at the um, on the Muppet show. You know them two old boys, Waldorf, that's it, I'm like him, do you know what I mean? Just moaning, get off, go get out of it, you, and all that. But we all, you know, all of us, you know, all of us have times where we get a bit sick of it and all that. And we say things that we shouldn't say, you know, and all that game, right, you know. And then again, we come to the daily part, right, where I want to make sure that these things are not forgotten. Justice for Sam Rimmer. Justice for Sam Rimmer. And those implicated are Dylan Tollett, Josh McKenna, Kai Duke McKenna, Mark Lavelle, Anthony Twinney Jones and others. Those that were in Lavrock Bank the, the evening in the cul-de-sac were Harry Kinsella, Mikey Ford, Lewis McPartland and Sam Rimmer. 
and uh, the majority of people say that they believe Kai Duke McKenna was the gunman. Other people have said it was Dylan Tollett or Josh McKenna. But those three, right, we got, photo, we got photos of two people leaving the scene of the murder, one fully covered, hands covered and gloves, right, which I say is Kai Duke McKenna. The other one, right, you can see the hands, they're white, so that's either got to be Dylan Tollett or Josh McKenna. More likely Josh McKenna, but then again, we don't know. Mark Lavelle, Anthony Twinney Jones, he's already doing eight years on firearms offences. Justice for Sam Rimmer. We mustn't forget, we mustn't allow it to go. Okay? And you know, the connections with Eddie O'Brien, that's Harry O'Brien's brother, with the connections right there, mum, Christine McPartland, yeah, that's it, we, yeah, you know. Aaron Donahoe and all that firm, yeah, that's it, they'll be coming soon. And as I say, let's move on, right? Let's move on that we don't forget, please don't forget justice for Jackie Rutter. Justice for Jackie Rutter. Now, implicated in the brutal murder of grandmother Jackie Rutter are Sam Gates, Thomas Jardine, Frankie Gates, Jake Duffy, Jake Robbo, William Duggan, Paddy Duggan, Kieran Salkeld, Sonny Wock, Kenny Moe, Jamie Duggan, Ginger John Ed, and more. And just because the Rutter boys, the, the children of, of uh, Jackie Rutter are scumbags, yes they are. It doesn't mean that she deserved to be brutally murdered the way she was. It certainly don't. You know, it certainly don't. Jack Hayes, yeah, Jack Hayes, I've heard the name before. He's a big player, you say, John. Where does he play into this then? Jack Hayes, is he Woodchurch? Is he Ford? Who's Jack? Uh, yeah, is he about there? Well, no, well, I haven't, they haven't been paying me off, right? I mean, come on and enlighten me. Honestly, enlighten me. Jack and Tony Hayes have been paying our hostage off, right? So come on in, J John. Let's tell us all about, um, right? Let's tell us all about Jack and Tony Hayes then. Okay, what firms are they affiliated to? Tell us what the firms are that, that um, Jack and... Um, He did the shooting in Morton. Which shooting in Morton? What are you saying? It was Jack and Tony Hayes that shot Jackie Rutter. Is that what you're saying, John? Because do you want me to add them to the list? Have you got anything to back it up? I mean, you know. Yeah, don't forget to smash the like button, please. Look, we got 15 likes with 100 of you in here. Please hit the like button. Smash the likes, right? And subscribe to the channel. And don't forget buying me a coffee as well. I mean, that ain't gonna, that ain't gonna hurt you, is it? That ain't gonna hurt you, is it? Buying me a coffee. So enlighten us, come on. Not Jackie, Louis Chapman. You mean Lewis Chapman? You mean Lewis Chapman, who was targeted at the Arrow Park Hotel by um, um, by um, Sonny Watt, Kieran Salkeld, Paddy Duggan with a shotgun and Jack Hayes. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll know, and, and, and Jack Hayes, was Jack Hayes the one that was shot at the garage by John Lewis and Lewis Chapman and then they got a not guilty? Was that Jack Hayes? And Jack Hayes did a, sh a shooting in Morton. Which one was that? Right, okay. Right, so Jack and Tony Hayes, right? Okay, here we go. See, we're getting some, we're getting some, oh, fucking hell, what's happening with these bloody comments? Right, let's have a look now. 
Right, now, let's see. Right, here. Yeah. He's in with a Ford. Most of the graph shot up Louis Chapo's house. Yeah, that's right. And weren't that where, um, um, wasn't that where, what's his name, got shot? Curtis Byrne, weren't he shot outside Lewis Chapman's house last December? Curtis Byrne, weren't he shot outside Lewis Chapman's house or near it? In Orrit Meadow Road, is it Orrit Meadow Road? Right, and John goes on to say, right, that Jack Hayes run away to North Wells in log cabins. Yeah, we'll be getting into them mobile home parks very soon about how they're used, right, for the distribution of um, uh, of narcotics all over the country. Log cabins, right, mobile home parks, and that they're being used to store firearms, distribute um, drugs and cash and all that, yeah. Mobile home home parks, right? Coming soon. I'll be I'll be revealing everything about them. And John says, yeah, and he shot them for revenge. Shot Louis Chapman's girlfriend's house. Yes. Ah, so here we go. Right. So Jack Hayes is by the garage, and Louis Chapman and John Lewis. Okay, I know it sounds the same. Let's get them right. Louis Chapman, Louis Chapman, and John Lewis, right, shoot at, um, at Jack Hayes at the garage. They get arrested in custody. And then they get a not guilty. And some of that is, I've got, I've got to be careful where I go from there on some of that. Yeah, I know, and you know why. But yes, okay, right, so Jack Hayes, has he still run away? Or run away? Has he still run away, as he, um, Jack Hayes and, and Tony Hayes? So you want me to add them two names, do you? John says, right, he says here, it's over drug patches originally, but still going on. Gone quiet since Christmas. Well, yes. So, okay, so you want me to add the name Jack Hayes and Tony Hayes to Justice for Jackie Rutter then? Okay, so John, in your opinion, you obviously know what's going on. So would you agree with all these names that I'm saying are implicated in the Jackie Rutter case? Right, this is to you, John. Okay, so I'd like you to tell me, right, if you think that, right, if you think that all these people, right, are, you know, I'm over the target with these, right? Here we go. Right, let's see. Right, the, the names I've got, right, Sam Gates, Thomas Jardine, Frankie Gates, Jake Duffy, Jake Robbo, William Duggan, Paddy Duggan, Kieran Silkeld, Sonny Wock, Kenny Moe, Jamie Duggan, Ginger John Ed. And now you're saying you want Jack Hayes and Tony Hayes to be included in that as well. Okay. And I do remember that we were talking ages ago, right? Someone said, right, that um, someone had a modified shotgun with two triggers or something. And that and that Jackie Rutter was shot with a long, you know, with a shotgun with two triggers. And, and someone went to press it once and it went twice. Whether that was nonsense or not, I don't know. And they said that it was Jake Duffy's gun. They said it was Jake Duffy's gun or something like that. Right, so, you see, so now we're getting somewhere. You see, I've got all this information. It did come in at the time. Okay, there was all different theories of what went on. And then it got sort of like, it was, um, you know, it was, we focused, let me pull the chair up, right? It focused on um, the, the 11 names that I read out. The 11 names that I read out. You know, I read out them 11 names and now John wants me to add two more names to it. Jack Hayes and Tony Hayes. Jack Hayes who did shootings last year. See, they all run off to Wales, right? There's a lot of them have got mobile homes or log cabins or caravans in Wales. Some of them are on caravan parks, mobile home parks, you see. And because the um, people who live there, it's transient. 
And so, right, and they, it's used, mobile home parks are used for the stashing of firearms and narcotics and money, okay? It's a multi, hundreds of millions of pounds a year, okay, that, that holiday uh, parks have been used, okay, right? Because they can, they can rent and they can have a home, mobile home there, right? And they can fill it, right, floor to ceiling with drugs and money, and then no one's there. And they might go down every other couple of weeks and all that game. So, you know what I mean? And the next thing is, right, Billy Rutter is due to be released. Billy Rutter's due to be released. Any, I think it's going to be... Um, Four months, uh, December, January, February, March. Um, right, he's, he's uh, due date of release of doing half the eight months is April the 11th, I think it is. That's when he was arrested, December the 11th. He got eight months, right? He got eight months and then... Um, he got eight months and then, right? He got um, he got eight months um, and, he, and he would have served four months on April the 11th. So Billy Rutter will be out again. Kevin Rutter was wanted on recall, right? I'd assume that he's been arrested and he's recalled. I don't know when, when he is. And John, you say that, I don't know that. You, I mean, you're saying you don't know about Jackie, except her sons ran out the back door, apparently. Well, okay, well, well that has never been mentioned to me. Never been mentioned to me, that hasn't, and I'll be honest. You know, that, that we were led to believe that um, Jackie Rutter was in the house with her partner or with a, a man about 70 or something and that the door was kicked down and she was shot dead and then they left. We, we, we didn't know that any of her sons were in the house and run out the back door. So we don't know that yet. No one else has suggested that. But it's good to keep talking about this because the thing is, right, the thing is, we don't want it to be forgotten. Justice for Jackie Rutter. Justice for, um, justice for Sam Rimmer. And yes, Groovy Gangster, yes, don't worry, we will be getting onto it. Most of the big caravan parks in North Wales are looked after by a few main Liverpool security companies. Not hard to work out why. Well, yes, they're looking after them because of all the stashes that are being used in caravan parks or, mo well, let's call them mobile home parks. That's what they are these days. They're not like the old caravans. They're proper mo static mobile homes, trailer trash, trailer parks. Okay. And that's what they're going to turn into, right, in years to come, right? They, You know, the UK will have the version of the American trailer trash, trailer park trash. And it starts off by middle class people buying them, right, as an investment. But they're the worst things to buy because you never own them. You only buy a 20-year lease. You buy the caravan. Then after 20 years, you've got to buy another one off the same firm and then a new lease. It's a con. But it's also being used to stash narcotics and money and firearms and organised crime, right? Is um, That's the way the distribution network works, from one caravan uh, mobile home park to another. And that's why, naturally, they will get um, security companies who are connected to organised crime groups to guard their mob uh, mobile home parks. Of course, it's only natural. We're only scratching the surface, do you know what I mean? Don't worry, as we go forward, it'll all come out. So, yes, I mean, that's what we're all about. We're a gossip channel, right? But we get there in the end. You know, we start off, you know, with a few names. We then discount the ones that are not, we don't think relevant. We then move on. Okay, we, you know, we're now introducing new names to this. Well, they're not new names. Jack Hayes has been mentioned loads before because he was shot. He was shot at the garage by John Lewis and someone else. And then they were in, um, in custody 
and then they got a not guilty. And then um, Lewis Chapman was targeted at the Arrow Park Hotel in the summer. And then Lewis Chapman's outside his house, I think it was Curtis Byrne who was shot. And since Christmas, right, it's all gone quiet because everyone's freaking out, right? The police are running around, busting people, doing stuff. All the peak grafters are worried about moving stuff about and all that, right? Now, I don't know how, how true this is, right? But I don't think it is true. But some people are saying, Art Hostage, you have cost the organised crime groups on Merseyside £100 million since Christmas. How about that then? As Butch Cassidy said, it will be cheaper for the railway to pay me not to rob the trains. <laughs> so if you see me, right, sponsoring, being sponsored by, right, um, the Wall Organised Crime Group, Daniel Kinahan, Liam Byrne, Tony Judge, all of them, right, then you know, right, that they're paying me millions of pounds to promote them. No, don't be so stupid. I'm not interested in any of that. I'll call everyone out. I don't care who it is. Whether it's the low scumbag on the street or whether it's a top drug cartel boss. They all get called out in the end. And as I say, we do focus on the um, on the feud a lot on the Ford Beachwood side, but the Woodchurch side, they've got their own and they think they, you know, I don't really go into that so much. Well, I haven't, you know, people are more are more um, forthcoming on the Ford Beechwood crew than the Woodchurch. So if you want to furnish me with some stuff that's credible on the beach at uh, the, the um, Woodchurch, what is it, Max, um, Matthew Chubsey Brown, Mickey Blue, and all them, right? I've got all the names, you know what I mean? So I did focus on them all and what they're all doing. And as I say, you know, it comes to the part where we do say we want justice for Sam Rimmer. We know all the people that were involved. We've named and shamed them. Gunman Kai Duke McKenna, Gunman Dylan Tollett, Gunman Josh McKenna, Gunman Anthony Twinney Jones, Gunman Mark Lavelle, and others involved in the... Um, facilitating and helping offenders, family members. And you can always tell, right, when you when I'm over the target by the ferocity of the attacks that I'll get. You see, now the attacks that I'll get, okay, that I can tell you now, right, um, Harry Kinsella, Lewis McPartland, Mikey Ford, Josh McKenna, Kai Duke McKenna, Mark Lavelle, Anthony Twinney Jones, although he's in jail, they've all set their, their social media now to private or they've deleted it in the last couple of days when I was screaming them, out, them all out. I'm blocked from like Danny Vaughan and a few of the others, right? But honestly, they can all see the writing on the wall. They can all see what's going on, okay? But honestly, th th these, these two outstanding cases need to be moved forward. And the only way we can do that, right, you know, the only way we can do that is if people, you know, step forward. Because what's the alternative? If the law's not going to do anything, okay, leave them to it then. Okay, so then they they let the um they let the walls off the lead uh, off the lead then. You know what I mean? And then people go round to um go round to where Kai Duke McKenna and Josh Tollett and all they're hanging about, right? And they start shooting round now. 
Okay, do they go round to his mum's house, kick her door down and shoot her dead? And then where does it all end? That's why it's got to be stopped. That's why we need people arrested and charged and then we step back and legal proceedings take their course. Because to be honest with you, if something is not done, right, this could be the lull before the storm. And we could be back here again, right, talking about another brutal murder or even plural murders. And then God forbid we go forward and these lunatics, these feral lunatics, gunmen, right, they get so much confidence that they start shooting at police and we can then get dead police officers like Dale Cregan because that's the road we're going down. If these people think that they're untouchable, if these people think that they're not going to be held to account, okay, right, even due to lack of evidence, whatever it is, right, then they think that then all of a sudden they up the ante and they go one step further. So God forbid we have to go down the Dale Cregan route before something's done. Why can't we do something now before we even get to that stage? Why couldn't something have been done before we've, we've seen five innocent people brutally murdered in five months? 11 year, 15 years ago, right? 11-year-old boy, right? Reese Jones, Sean Mer Mercer, right? Brutally kills him, right? And we thought that that might be a turning point, but no, it weren't. And then we can look back, you know, the biggest shame is that Jeanette Mercer weren't sterilised and then she wouldn't have given birth to Sean Mercer or Joseph Mercer, Mercer and Reese Jones would still be alive. And I defy anyone to tell me, right, that the world wouldn't have been a better place if Jeanette Mercer had been sterilised and Sean Mercer and Joseph Mercer had never been born. Reese Jones would still be alive and society would be much better off. And I know it's not what people want to hear. They want all that fluffy language. Oh, it's deprivation. It's this and build them a community centre and let's do this and that. No, listen, the kid glove stuff don't work. They're not interested. They're not interested whatsoever. The only the, the only language they know, right, is is forceful, um, is forceful authoritarian stuff. That's the only thing that works. Lock them up, right? Lock them up and take all the assets off their mum, dad, and, and all that game. Banish them from the city. Uh, well, no, no. Where are you going to send them? So anyway, right, you know what I mean? I've now done the hour. You've got my hours early evening one, right? I know it's a bit sort of thin on the ground. Because really, to be honest, there ain't a lot happening. Or maybe I ain't even had a look. Maybe I should go and have a look. Let's see if we got some news breaking in the, in the mainstream world. So let's see what trouble them um, that, that little firm have been up to today. You know, the troublemakers. The ones who've been causing trouble for thousands of years. See what they've been up to today geopolitically. Yeah, honestly, um, and any, anyone who's got money in the bank who thinks that they can uh, ride it out and if there's a bank a scandal that they get paid, right, the deposit insurance won't cover it, the FDIC one. Right, because they ain't got enough money, right? Honestly, so if you've got money in the bank, take it out. That's what you've got to do. Otherwise, you're going to lose it. And the so-called ceasefire between the um, Russia and Khazaria war, right? They've been, the West has rejected it. Well, you know why? They don't want a ceasefire. Okay, you know what this is? This is, a, a, um, a, you know, a feud that goes back thousands of years, hundreds of years. Okay? They want to reclaim Khazaria, which is right bang in the middle of, you know, right, uh, Ukraine is part of that. And the people responsible, of course they're not going to accept the ceasefire. At the State Department, you've got Barbara Newland, Robert Kagan. Well, I mean, you just look at who they are.
you know, and it makes me laugh when they say, um, you know, someone like, um, you know, Ross Browning in Ireland, he's going to lose a million, right? He's going to lose a million pound, uh, 1.5 million euros. Well, that's what a month's wage is. Interest rates have gone up another quarter percent. So my, my, my mortgage will be about 1,700 a month. I don't, I don't worry about it now. I'll just give them what I can each month. What, what are they going to do? So I was just uh, a, a little round up there of the news and see what's happened. Any other news coming in? Right, don't forget this is the early one. You know, I mean, I can always come back and do a late one later on tonight. I'm a bit tired, but I'll have a word with Darren and Mark, see if they want to come back and do a late, late one. Right, just having a read, that's all. Right, so. What I should do is I'll come back later, right? So anyway, thank you very much. Smash the like button. Please hit the like button. Let me see how many people have it likes. 22 likes, right? And there's, there was 100 of you in here, right? Honestly, can we get out to 40? Smash the like button, please, right? And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, okay? And I might come back later. If not, right, this is the Thursday night. You had one Thursday morning. I did a, li a, li a live, didn't I, with Mark and Darren last night. I forgot. Into the early hours. So I might come back later. We'll see what happens, who else goes live or whatever. And, and I'll get back to you. So that's why you need to subscribe to the channel and put on the notifications. And then you'll see if I'll come back live later. Well, you'll see me coming back live, live later. But anyway, thank you very much, everyone. I hope you have a good Thursday evening. And it's Friday tomorrow. TFI Friday. And then it's the weekend. So all the best to everyone. Peace and happiness to everyone in amongst all this mayhem. Subscribe to the channel and smash the like button, okay? This is Art Hostage, signing off.